Hoping this is the one. Three, two, one. All right, guys. So Mike and I uh, just rolling into Woman, Wisconsin. And we're going to go take a look at this car that was partially disassembled, motor taken out, stuff like that. And Mike knows a little bit more of the story of the car. I'm just along for the ride. So, Mike, you want to go ahead and tell the folks a little bit about what we're doing? So, yeah, I had a gal uh, message me about a car that she's looking to sell that apparently her uncle took off the road 25 years ago. And uh, he was pulled the motor to reseal it because he had some oil leaks. And... Uh, and the motor never got put back in. She she bought the car, I think, four years ago um, after he passed away and uh, just never got it reassembled and has just decided that's probably not in her future. So she's decided to sell it instead of take on that uh, repair. So we're going to go check it out and see what we find. Checking this thing out for the very first time, several things stood out. First being, the stainless steel was in immaculate condition. Second being, taking a peek in the interior here, it looked really, really nice. So worked our way around to the back of the car. You'll notice that the engine was taken out, but we already knew that going in. One of the most important factors when looking at a DeLorean is the condition of the frame. You definitely want to avoid rust or any holes that are in it. This one looked fantastic. Louvers were taken off, engine cover taken off. Parts kind of scattered throughout the garage. Up on the table, you see the rear fascia. Everything was organized in boxes. You can see the exhaust around the floor, laundry basket full of shop manuals. And the guy in this photo is Bruce Buchanan from Winona, Minnesota. Bruce purchased the car in October of 1992 as a repo from the bank. He took the car apart sometime in the mid 1990s because of an oil leak, and he never put the engine back in. Bruce loved tinkering with cars and electronics, and it's believed he put less than 5,000 miles on it the entire time he had it. Upon Bruce's death in 2018, the car was purchased by his niece, Teresa Heim, and her husband, Nate. Teresa is pictured here with Mike. Teresa and her husband, Nate, offered many times to help Bruce get the car put back on the road, but Bruce always declined. After four years in Teresa's garage, and waiting for the right time to get started putting it back together, she ultimately decided to pass a project on to someone else. And this is where our story begins. So after getting the paperwork in order, it was time to get this thing loaded into the trailer. Thankfully, they had it on some roller dollies, so it was nice and easy to push out of the garage. Not that it didn't roll good on its wheels, but we wanted to spin the car around backwards, which is the way we wanted it. Having it on the dollies made it a lot easier. Now in a normal situation, we would just hook this up with the winch and cable and pull it into the trailer. But since the engine and everything was all out of it already, we figured the three of us could easily push it in, which is what we did. And it was much quicker this way. We also loaded boxes of parts, the rear fascia, the engine, and anything DeLorean related that we could find into the front of the trailer and the back of the truck. Once we had everything in and strapped down, we were ready to go. Here we are back on the road and heading south with our newest project in tow. For those of you who are new to the channel, we're glad you're here and we have some incredibly exciting news about a new offering. So this will be the very first of several EV converted DeLoreans we plan to offer and we're calling this project DeLorean Apex. So why don't we head out into our main shop to check this out and I'll show you what we're talking about. So we've named this project Apex because this really is the best of what can be done to a DeLorean. We have Willwood brakes on this car, KW suspension that's been lowered about three inches. This suspension is fully adjustable with ride height and ride quality as far as comfort and softness. Um, we have electric power steering. We have billet aluminum lower control arm with control arm braces 
and rear adjustable links just to start. And now I want to show you one of the biggest upgrades we've done with this. Come around to the back. And this is one of the first with a trunk. So aside from the trunk space, which is great, this has been converted to a fully electric vehicle. So what we have here is a Tesla Model 3 performance rear drive unit in the mid-engine position on this car. And at the very back here, we have a battery pack and a second pack up at the front. The rear we're showing five cells. And at the front, we have three for a total of 55 kilowatts of battery power. So these two packs push us past a 200 mile range. Uh, personally, I ran this car about 25% down on the battery in 65 miles. And that puts us more like a 260 range. So somewhere in there with this, but very similar to what you could expect out of a new electric vehicle. Uh, along with that, one of my favorite features is uh, this little cutout here. So this is a stock DeLorean license plate bezel that has been trimmed out and added a hinge. And right here is where your charge port would be. Uh, this is a standard uh, J1772 plug. And you'll notice we do have CCS quick charge, which can bring this car to an 85% charge in under an hour, again, making it very usable and more along the lines of a new electric car. So we'll take you in and show you the rest of this interior that for the most part has not changed. One thing we did want to show you was obviously some of the gauges don't cross from gasoline to electric. So these have changed yet we kept them looking original as far as font and style. But now I'll show you what we have upper left. We have low voltage battery, 12 volt stuff down below high voltage battery. We have speedometer here in the middle that really has not changed except for this is now GPS controlled up here to the left on the dash is a little GPS box. And now we got rid of all the problematic angle drive and this is a nice steady speedometer. Next to that, we have amperage. Uh, and then to the right, we have battery temperature and battery percentage and showing us that we now have a 100% electric DeLorean. Another neat feature about this dash is that the needles are backlit. I'll show you that here. So they light up and I think that's just a real nice modern touch to an otherwise stock looking binnacle. So now is a good time to go for a drive and I'll go over the stats and amenities with you. So the end result here is a car that's just a pleasure to drive. It's quiet in here, uh, but still has a real modern feel to the drive. Uh, amenities that are worth mentioning are electric air conditioning uh, and re electric resistant heat. As you'd expect from an electric car, we do have regenerative braking. That's really a one pedal drive to where when I lift on this, it goes to a moderate brake. And under normal stopping conditions, you really don't have to apply the hydraulic brakes until about five miles an hour. But of course they're there, full hydraulic system for any uh, emergency stop or a quicker or more of a panic stop. Some specs on this car is this motor is rated at 335 horsepower with 444 pound-feet of torque. So we will give you a pull here, like 20 to 60, and show you a little bit of what this thing can do as far as performance. Yep. So I'm gonna show you a hard pull here from like 20 to 60, and here we go. So a good friend of mine, Aaron, stopped by last night because he wanted to see this electric car in person before he left. And somehow he talked me into a road trip out to Google with me and him, a 4,000 mile trip to California to drop this off ourselves. Um, I kind of was a little nervous about turning this over to a transporter and not knowing what's going to happen to it. And he was also nervous. Uh, he volunteered to ride along with me and so we can trade uh, drivers back and forth. And so we're going to take you guys along on this epic road trip to uh, Google headquarters to deliver this car.
sure video will not do this scenery justice, but this is some gorgeous landscape we're coming through in Utah. We are in Mountain View, California. We made it. Um, we had some troubles I'll tell you guys about later, but uh, got the car all cleaned up. Google's seven miles from here. We're about ready to get in this car and deliver it to them. So the important thing is uh, we made it. The car's here looking great. Drove it the last 93 miles uh, in without a trailer. The car did great. I was at night with the lights on, probably doing 65 on the highway. Used, uh, we're down about 50% charge. And I'd say the car has about 110 miles on that charge now. So pretty good. So now that the DeLorean Apex has officially been delivered to Google, we're going to take you along on some of the test runs we took the car on to shake it down and make sure it was ready for the open road. These were our first runs with a fully charged battery and a passenger in the car, which added some extra weight. All right, I'm just going to stab this one down and see if we get tire squeal or not uh, in three, two, one. 58. After doing some research overnight, we found out that the fastest recorded quarter mile time for a DeLorean was a 12.29. This is something that we thought that this car was capable of achieving, and possibly even surpassing. So we decided to take the passenger out of the car to lighten it up and do a few more runs. Single passenger run in three, two, one. After that run and seeing that we were just that much closer to that 12.29, we loaded up a new profile to boost the amperage and give us a little bit more horsepower to try and get us under that number. Performance test in three, two, one, go. would be our final attempt to try and break the record as we were out of time and needed to get the car loaded onto the transporter and headed west to Google for delivery. Hoping this is the one. Three, two, one. So with that, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you